safe element. Let's talk about human trafficking. And I mean the truths of human trafficking. Human trafficking is defined as the trade in humans, most commonly for the purpose of sexual slavery, forced labor, or commercial sexual exploitation. You may be under the impression that human trafficking is a thing of the past, or you may think that human trafficking only occurs in less civilized parts of the world. The truth is, it's neither a thing of the past, nor a thing that is reserved for the seemingly lawless parts of the planet. It's quite literally in every part of the world, and estimates put the numbers at around 21 million people with a million and a half of those being in North America alone. Real numbers are difficult to achieve, but between 800,000 and 4 million people are forced into some form of human trafficking scenario every year. The experts estimate that annually between 100,000 and 300,000 children are sexually exploited in the United States, and the average age of those children is 14. 80% of human trafficking is sexual in nature, with the remaining 20% being some form of forced labor. Human trafficking is big money for those who benefit from it, since estimates put the total income at over $32 billion annually. Now here's a number to hang on to in your mind. 98% of people trafficked in the United States are women and young girls. So why is that last number important? Let's come back to that in just a minute. Anyone who values their life, which is, well, pretty well everyone, would agree that human trafficking is clearly wrong. If you yourself would not like to be forced into an unfree life, then you must agree that human trafficking is wrong. This is a non-negotiable statement. But there are many people in the world who put profit before doing the right thing every day, and we all know that. So now that we all agree that human trafficking is wrong, what do we do about it? Surely we have the ability to do something about it, right? Men, did you know that we have the power to put a ginormous dent in the human trafficking industry? Yes, we do. You remember that 98% number we mentioned earlier? That's the key number to focus on. If 90% of the human trafficking victims are women, odds are pretty good that a similar percentage of the population of those who take advantage of these women are men. So men, we have to step up our game. Now, I don't want to take out the human factor in this, since respect for human life is what we're talking about, but let's break this down to a simple supply and demand scenario. As with any business or industry, it can only exist if there's a demand for the product. At one time in America, commercial ice making for ice boxes was an enormous industry. With the national availability of refrigeration in homes across America, the commercial ice business for ice boxes is no longer a national need. The demand disappeared, so the supply is no longer required. As men of America, we hold the ability to impact the demand portion, which will alter the supply. Right now, women and young girls who could just as easily be your sister, your daughter, your niece, your cousin, or your mother are being forced into sexual slavery to satisfy the demand placed on the human trafficking industry for women. And it's not just women. Young boys are subjected to the same kind of forced sexual exploitation too. Now, I'm sure there are more than a few people watching this who are thinking you have no part to play in reducing the demand. But let me try to bring this home for a few of us. And I literally mean bring it home. Studies have shown the direct link between pornography and human trafficking. Pornography is estimated to be a $14 billion industry. That's billion with a B. You have to realize that anytime you have an industry that big, there are going to be people who want a piece of the action. And anytime there's a business that involves activity that not everybody wants to be a part of, the desire to make money often trumps the respect for humanity. Finding people who are willing to subject themselves to that kind of life voluntarily isn't exactly easy. So forcing people against their will is one alternative. Let's jump back to our supply and demand scenario we talked about. Now, it might be easy to discount the impact of that pornography has on the human trafficking tragedy. After all, that is an issue that occurs far from where you live, and you have no power to do anything about it. Would it trouble you to think that you can contribute to the problem with as little effort as a mouse click. Every minute of every day, good people aid and abet human trafficking merely by clicking their mouse. Every mouse click on a porn site represents demand. More mouse clicks equates to a higher demand on the industry. More demand, more supply. Think about that for a minute. There is a key to ending human trafficking, and it's as simple as respecting human life in the same way you yourself would like to be respected. Now, Jesus had something to say on this subject. The words recorded in Matthew 7:12 say, so in everything, do unto others that you would have them do unto you. It's not a difficult concept to grasp, but let's take it home again. We have the power to say no to human trafficking by choosing not to click on the one thing that adds to the demand and the destruction of human lives. No child ever says they want to be a sex slave when they grow up. Every life matters. Every click is important. A click of a mouse can manipulate a life, and not for the better, 
Is it worth it? That's something to pray about, don't you think?